going to talk about HIV, which I'm pretty sure basically all of you know a little something about. I'd like to start with a question. Do people living with HIV or AIDS look sick? Well, the real answer to this question is no, they don't. And to be honest, the first time I saw this question, I thought the opposite. Our train of thought when concerning this question exactly proves the point that sometimes, perhaps a little inevitably, when it comes to HIV infection, our inherent stigma prevents us from telling the best facts. But what exactly is HIV stigma? Where does it come from? And more importantly, why does standing up to combating and ideally changing such stigma matter? Let us start by defining HIV stigma. HIV stigma refers to an inevitable attitude or beliefs about people living with HIV. It is a prejudice that comes with labeling an individual as a part, as a member of a group that is believed to be socially unacceptable. For example, the feeling that only certain group of people get HIV, and the belief that certain people deserve to get HIV because of their choices, are both manifestations of such stigma. So, where does such stigma come from anyway? Well, to start with, fear certainly plays a large role. Um, the statistics are certainly striking. Ever since its discovery in the early 1980s, HIV such AIDS has been responsible for more than 32 million deaths worldwide. Its diagnosis even equated death sentence in the 1980s and 90s. The fear works in combination with the overuse of labels. Some people may already have negative feelings about women, gay men, immigrants, black people, people who use drugs, and others, and these pre-existing add to the severity of the issue. Lack of data transparency makes matters worse. Many countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Japan and China, have been reluctant in disclosing their respective HIV data to the, to the World Health Organization database and their citizens alike. As a result, the masses impressions of HIV remains frozen and outdated. In fact, many of our current ideas about HIV still come from the images of HIV that first appeared in the early 1980s. And the ghost of fear and angst surrounding the emerging HIV epidemic back then largely persists today. This brings us then to another why is combating HIV stigma crucial, and how would it make a difference? Well, in two ways, actually. First of all, HIV stigma severely impairs the HIV response. The circulating rumors propagate incorrect information that may persuade people against taking adequate precautions. For example, some may decline to use protective because they saw, quote, only, only gay people can get HIV, straight people do not get HIV, and believe the nonsense. Furthermore, according to the World Health Organization, the fear of stigma and discrimination is the main reason why people are reluctant to get tested for HIV and disclose their status as well as taking drugs. This may lead to people getting late diagnosis when the virus has already advanced to AIDS, severely reducing the effects of treatments, increasing the likelihood of transmitting HIV to others, and causing early deaths. That's why, for one thing, combating HIV stigma matters for timely actions during the first few stages of HIV infection as well as reducing the number of newly confirmed HIV cases in general. Secondly, both from the society, stigma, both from the society at large and from people with HIV themselves, still has serious effects on whether treatment is received. Firstly, many people 
or living with HIV are discriminated against and denied treatment by other members of the society. The population's most vulnerable to HIV infection faces stigma, prejudice, and discrimination in their daily lives. This pushes them to the margins of society, where fear and poverty makes accessing the resources they need to protect themselves, especially healthcare and HIV services, difficult. Secondly, there is also the issue of internalized HIV stigma, which happens when a person takes negative ideas and stereotypes about HIV and starts to apply these to himself or herself. Internalized HIV stigma can lead to feelings of shame, fear of exposure, isolation, and despair. These feelings, in turn, could make people reluctant to be treated or tested for HIV. So as you could probably conclude, an effective response to HIV pandemic must tackle the root causes of stigma. As doing so, we maximize the possibility that healthcare services are inclusive and accessible, and people living with HIV will retain their self dignity and receive treatment willingly. So, to sum up, why is combating HIV stigma important? I'd like to respond by quoting Mr. Michelle Sinnevin, Executive Director of Human AIDS or the Jointed United Nations Programs of HIV and AIDS. He once said, Any time AIDS is won, stigma, shame, distrust, discrimination, and empathy was on the side. Every time AIDS has been defeated, it has been because of trust, openness, dialogue between individuals and communities, family support, human solidarity, and the human perseverance to find paths and solutions. The current plan of the United Nations is to eliminate AIDS by the year of 2030. However, with the mere efforts of healthcare professionals, scientists, and people with HIV actively and bravely seeking help, it is impossible for this goal to be met. Society at large needs to make a change, and reducing HIV stigma and discrimination is a fantastic start. This is a campaign where efforts from all of us counts. What can we do? Sir? Avoid problematic language when talking about HIV and AIDS. Show reassurance, care, and support for people living with HIV. And more importantly, don't be afraid to stand up and bravely speak out to myths and stereotypes about HIV and tell us the facts. Following are some of the facts I think necessary for us to know. First, HIV does not discriminate against age, race, gender, sexual orientation, class, or any other identifier. Secondly, it is still possible for people tested positive for HIV to have safe sex while reducing the risk of transmission. Thirdly, people with HIV or AIDS do not look sick. The only way to know one's HIV status is to test and have open conversation. Fourthly, HIV viruses can only be transmitted via blood, semen, vaginal fluid, anal mucus, and breastbone. And finally, it is the responsibility of each and every individual, regardless of their HIV status, to implement the safe sex strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, here I stand today telling you the facts about HIV, and I hereby implore you to remember these facts by heart. Please don't hesitate to share these facts with your friends, your family, or those around you in general as you go home. 
because to further prevent the transmission of this HIV requires all of us to help. Please remember, only tackle the root causes of stigma today. Can we hope for a brighter future which reduces HIV risks tomorrow? Let us all work together to educate the masses and demystify HIV. To correct the stereotypes about HIV and address irrational fears. Thank you all for listening and have a good day.